Wherever you go in the world and show a person the swoosh, there's a high chance that he will say Nike. Also, there is a chance you are wearing Nike or have them in your wardrobe. Nike is one of the most famous brands in the world and the biggest sportswear company ever. But the story of Nike is one of the most interesting stories in the world. Nike's rise is full of passion, failures, and it gets really dark. It all started with a kid named Phil Knight. Phil didn't know what to do with his life. He only knew that he likes running. He went to study journalism at the University of Oregon. Then he realized that this is not it. And went to get an MBA in business from Stanford University. There he got a task to make a paper. He came up with can Japan's shoes do to German shoes that Japanese cameras did to German cameras? Now this sounds weird, but Japanese cameras replaced German cameras in the market. And he wondered if Japan's shoes could replace German shoes like Adidas and Puma. Hopefully he got a nice grade for that. Anyways, he graduated, but still didn't know what to do. So he took his last money and went traveling. He went to Europe, Asia, but that paper always stayed in his head. When he visited Japan, he went to city of Kobe. There he saw a shoe store that belongs to Onitsuka Tiger. He saw that their shoes were high quality. Business instincts and paper in his head kicked in and he tried to meet the owner of Onitsuka Tiger. Phil presented himself as an American shoe distributor, but he wasn't. When Onitsuka people asked him about the company that he represented, he told them Blue Ribbon Sports. The company didn't exist. Phil came up with the name at the spot. The Japanese believed him and made a contract. If only Google existed back then, Phil would be in a big trouble. Great. Phil has high quality shoes from a company that nobody else does business with in the US. So he would make a lot of money. He just needs to go to retail stores in the US so that they sell the shoes. But no retailer wanted to sell the shoes. First shipment came. 12 Onitsuka Tiger shoes for $50. And much more will come. Now what? Phil went to running tracks and sold the shoes from the back of his car. But that won't be enough when more shipments come. So he got an idea to contact his old running coach to ask him what he thinks about the shoes. That coach was Bill Bowerman. Bill is a legendary coach. He trained 31 Olympic athletes. When Bill saw the shoes, he wanted to partner up with Phil. They each invested $500 for the next shipment. $3.33 per pair that got them around 300 pairs. Bill got amazing connections. Because of that, the shipment was sold in three months. In their first year, Bill and Phil sold over $8,000 worth of shoes. That meant they could hire their first employee. Jeff Johnson would become crucial for the company. Year after, in 1965, their revenue was over $20,000. They opened their first shoe store. Everything went great and smooth for Blue Ribbon Sports. But a huge problem will come soon. In a meeting with Onitsuka Company, Phil saw a paper that showed Japanese companies scheduled meetings with other American distributors. When Phil confronted them, the Japanese said that they want to buy 51% of Blue Ribbon Sports if they want to continue their business. Phil didn't want that, so with his whole world crushed, Phil went back to the US and told the news to his team that this is the end. But they didn't give up. They came up with the idea to manufacture their own shoes. They didn't have anything. Well, they did. See, Bill Bowerman is considered the guy who bought jogging into the US. He wrote a book that sold over 1 million copies. Why does that matter? Well, when a shipment came from Japan, Bill would take one pair, inspect it, and send design improvements to Japan. That led to Cortez, a shoe that became the best-selling shoes in 1968, thanks to the 1968 Olympics held in Mexico. They sold over 300,000 pairs and couldn't keep up with the demand. The design was by Bill, so they owned it. Not only that, one morning when Bill had breakfast, he saw that the waffle machine's grooves could be a great running shoes. So he designed Moon Shoe. Two designs. Awesome. But they need a new name. Florian Sports is not a good name for a brand. The first employee, Jeff Johnson, came up with the name Nike after the Greek goddess of victory. Phil paid a student $35 to design the logo for the new company. Phil went to Japan to find a network of manufacturers for more control. And so the Nike brand was launched. They now had everything except funding. See, funding was always a problem. Even when they sold Onitsuka shoes, Phil would constantly take loans from the bank for shipment. 
So this time, Phil found a trading company in Japan that would invest in Nike. Then Nike would become the biggest sportswear brand in 1999. That's the end of the story. Just kidding. They got sued by Oritsuka and the University of Oregon for trademark infringement. Some were settled out of the court and some went to Supreme Court. Nike had huge competition. They needed to find ways to make more profit and make their brand more famous and relevant. An organization was rising and Nike decided to make a division just for this organization. The name of the organization was NBA. Nike had different approach to business. They would sponsor athletes. It was time to decide who to sponsor in the NBA. A young kid with great talent catches their eye. Nike saw great potential in him and offered him a contract, but he was a fan of Adidas and Adidas offered him more money. Nike decided to make a shoe specially for him and gave him a percentage of each shoe sold. That was the first time a deal like this happened. The kid accepted the offer. His name was Michael Jordan and the sneakers they made for him are Air Jordans. This was probably the best business move of Nike. In the first year, Nike earned over 126 million of dollars. Looking at this graph, Nike still earns billions for Jordan. Air Jordans got banned in the NBA. Nike took the opportunity and made a campaign about it with the saying, Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Nike had many successful campaigns like Just Do It and many, many more. Some of them got them an Emmy Award. But still, Nike couldn't escape from controversy. And it's dark. Human rights wanted the boycott of Nike. Life magazine reported Nike for child labor practices and that they didn't pay their workers wages to sustain their lives. Workers worked more than 60 hours per week with no rights to drinking water and toilets, making less than minimum wage. Nike's defense was that they rent the factories. They don't own it, they have no control, but will try to make it better. Ex-employees sued Nike for gender discrimination. Alison Felix, Olympic gold medalist, said that Nike wanted to pay her 70% less due to pregnancy. Nike said that athletes need to have a certain level of performance for full payment. All of these things today, Nike hopefully doesn't do that. Their business is structured in divisions. They have football division, basketball division, running division, etc. This is good because if a division is performing poorly, they can much easier improve that. For example, if the football division is underperforming, they could sign a famous athlete or hot new talent. Nike invests in individuals. Cristiano Ronaldo, Roger Federer, Serena Williams are all Nike athletes. The brand grew with the association for superstars. They got huge marketing compared to other brands. That's why they are so successful. Today, Nike is scaling women business, also investing in new technologies like Nike Fit, an app that scans your foot and tells you what shoe you should be wearing. Nike tries to focus their sales online, not on retailers, so that they can eliminate middlemen and make much more money. They equip the full NBA, NFL, and MLB with deals worth billions of dollars. Today, Phil Knight is worth over $37 billion. He said that they were constantly in debt and that he didn't sleep well. I think he's sleeping good now. The brand is a cultural icon and one of the most recognizable brands in the world. It is said that more Nike shoes have been sold than there is people on the planet. All this because of a great team and a man with a passion for running. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell button if you want to see more of business content and business stories.